Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Christian McDonald. I'm a solutions engineer at Big Eye. And today, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm going to be talking to you about our Big Eye platform and the title called From Snowflake to Legacy, End-to-End -end Data Observ Observability for the Enterprise. And we're going to be doing a couple things in this webinar. We're going to do a, a demonstration of the Big Eye platform, our data observability product. And we're going to really focus in on how we support both the modern and legacy data sources, hence the title from Snowflake to the legacy. And so that's really something that we're going to uh, focus in on today. So with that, jumping right into it, go to the first slide. Let's talk a little bit about the typical data landscape and, and what we've experienced working with enterprise companies at Big Eye. So by now, it's, it's very common that most companies have the modern cloud data warehouses whether that be Snowflake, Databricks, um, BigQuery, Redshift. But those cloud data warehouses are not typically the place where data originates. Typically, that's coming from the more legacy systems. And if you're working, especially in the enterprise companies that we work with, there's a lot more of these legacy systems that they haven't you know, phased out yet, or they're, they're still providing really critical pieces of data for the business. So whether that be your Oracle databases, your SAP HANA, your IBM DB2s, or the transact really the transactional ones like MySQL, SQL Server, Postgres, that's really what we're seeing. There's, there's a lot of the blend of these uh, legacy sources with the modern cloud data warehouses, and then uh, eventually feeding into a BI layer like a Tableau or a Power BI. So that's a typical data landscape that we've been seeing at the enterprise level. And so the Big Eye platform that allows us to bring data observability to those types of hybrid tech stacks, so both the modern and legacy systems. We have kind of four main components that, that really allow us to support data observability for those larger and more complex use cases. And the, the first main differentiator is our lineage. So we have lineage for tables, columns, and now the ETL job. Um, and that is within source as well as cross-source column level lineage. And so that's really going to empower the, you know, the enterprise data teams to be able to see the full end-to-end -end pipeline from these legacy systems to the, the snowflakes and the cloud data warehouses to the BI layer. So that's kind of our lineage and a, a main component for Big Eye. The next thing is our anomaly detection. So for every one of our metrics, we have um, anomaly detection available. So we use machine learning to instantly capture when you when you create a metric in Big Eye, we go ahead and we capture you know 21 days or, or three weeks worth of history for that metric. And that gives us enough information to provide uh, anomaly detection for these metrics to tell you know when when does the data become anomalous and when does the team need to get alerted to look into these metrics. And then the next core component for Big Eye is our, our dev tooling. So in order to deploy this type of monitoring at scale at the enterprise, you need to be able to have this, this, some available dev tooling to, to make things easier. One of our core functionality is called Big Config, which is our monitoring as code feature. So you can, in a few lines of YAML, you can specify you know, what metrics and what columns you want to deploy, and you can deploy monitoring across you know, almost your entire data set with a few lines of YAML. We also have you know, a, a very robust REST API, anything you can do within the UI of Big Config, you can also do programmatic. And then the last thing I'll talk about is just overall, we have over 1 million data sets profiled and over 500 million checks or what we call metrics that run daily. And then the lineage driven development and the customized run schedules really just allow you to scale this data observability across your entire uh, pipeline. So that be your legacy systems, your modern warehouses, your BI tool, all, all of that. So this is really the platform of Big Eye and the four main functions that allow us to provide this data of their ability to our enterprise and our, our more complex data. And then with this platform, we have some new, uh, really cool and exciting features that I get to help announce today. And the first one is going to be our scorecard feature. So this scorecard feature is for you to easily understand as you're navigating through Big Eye and looking at the different levels, whether that be at a source, schema, table, column level, you can quickly get a, a glimpse of, you know, what's the overall health of this schema or this entire source or this, this particular table. You can e 
easily get that that information tells you how much monitoring is deployed and how, how many metrics are healthy versus unhealthy and just gives you a quick look into health as you browse through big eye so that's a really exciting feature and, and a quick request we got a lot from our customers so definitely excited to show that off a little more in the demo today and then the next feature which is probably our, one of our biggest feature launches is going to be a new column level lineage support for ETL platforms. So this is an industry first for column level lineage using ETL tools. And so in our first release, we're going to be supporting Informatica Power Center, and then we're going to bring in, be bringing support for more connectors very soon. But with the first release, we have Informatica Power Center, and what this allows us to do is map column level lineage between the you know transactional or legacy sources to your modern data warehouses with the actual ETL job that's performing the replication or the transfer from that source system to the warehouse. So we're able to provide that cross-source column level lineage as well as show the exact job used to copy that data over or move that data over to the new source. So that's gonna be really exciting and, and the importance of that really is without comprehensive, you know, actual pipeline coverage, there's a lot of risk that enterprises face today. You know, not only data quality issues because they're not able to see, you know, the full pipeline and, and where things are going wrong, um, but there's also, you know, compliance issues. There's just overall operational inefficiency. And so, and, and then just a lack of trust. So with this new release of column level lineage with ETL tools, um, this will uh, make root cause analysis a lot faster because um, when I'm looking at the lineage graph as a data engineer, I can see, you know, um, here's the issue arise in my Postgres table, and here's the exact job that actually copied that data over. So I know what job I can look at that may be causing that problem and, and where I need to start to implement fixes to reduce data quality issues. So this is a really important thing to do. And lastly, what we've seen in, in the space of data observability, lineage is a really hot topic and one that a lot of people like to claim that they support. And with Big Eye, it's really just, a, I mean, we have the most comprehensive lineage out there, and especially with the addition of the Informatica Power Center connector. This gives enterprises really the full picture of their end-to-end pipeline. And, and lineage is something that enterprises are really struggling with. And so it's, it's something that we're really excited to announce today. And then another thing to mention is we do have a browser extension. So for the business users who don't want to go into Big Eye and try and understand all of these data quality rules and, and how, how you're checking for data quality, we have a browser extension which scans all of the lineage that we've collected you know, from your legacy systems through the ETL jobs to your cloud data warehouses. It's going to look at that full end-to-end -end lineage and present a business user-friendly report on the actual dashboard uh, you're looking at. So let's say we have a Tableau dashboard that a business user uses to make some uh, you know, really important decisions. They just open up the browser extension and it'll tell them you know, how much monitoring is deployed, how many metrics are healthy, and if there's any open data quality issues for them to you know, know whether or not they should trust this data. And so this browser ex extension is available for Tableau and Power BI currently, and we're going to be adding support for more BI tools later. But this is really important because it kind of brings the whole picture of the lineage together by presenting this information to the business user before they go and try and you know, make a decision with their data so they don't lose trust in their analytics. So those are kind of some, some core features that we wanted to talk about today. Then the now I can really get into a live demo and show how those features and the new releases that we're, that we're using work in practice. So to start, I'm going to take on the persona of a business user, and I'm going to go into a, a really important Tableau dashboard. So this is our critical Tableau dashboard. As you can see on the right-hand side, I have my Big Eye browser extension open. Let's say I'm a business user, and I've just opened up this dashboard to help make some really important decisions. I'm going to open up the browser extension, and I'm going to see first whether or not I can trust the data in this dashboard. Let me go to a workspace that we want to look at. So this is my critical dashboard. At a quick glance, I can see that the quality is at risk and my pipeline is on time. So what this means is that there are open data quality issues for the tables or any of the upstream tables used to create this dashboard. 
but all the whole pipeline has been running on time. So the data is up to date and of the expected volume. It's going to tell me how much monitoring is deployed, how much, how many metrics are healthy versus not healthy. And then importantly on the bottom, it's actually going to give me the number of issues and how, how recently the data team has looked into these issues. So we can see we have these seven open data quality issues. And then the last update on those issues was 18 hours ago. So I already know that the data team has seen and is working on these issues as a business user. I can just look at the browser extension and know that, you know, okay, there's open issues. I shouldn't trust this data right now, but the data team is working on it. Um, so this is our browser extension and what the business user would see when trying to consume a dashboard. Um, now I want to kind of change personas a little bit and look at the perspective of a, a data engineer and how they would interact with Big Eye. And to do that, I'm going to start off by looking at an issue within Big Eye. So this is an alert I just received from Big Eye as a data engineer. Let's say I got either a Slack message, a Teams message, an email, a Jira ticket, ServiceNow ticket, what have you. I was alerted in some fashion from Big Eye that there's an issue with my data. So I'm going to go into this view and it's going to, it's going to show me that, you know, using our anomaly detection, we, we can pick up that on the pattern of this data. So if I look at the whole history, typically the average of the price per unit column falls within this band of, you know, 14 to, to 10 dollars. We fall within there, you know, pretty typically, but within the past few days, it looks like that average price per unit has dropped significantly. So using our anomaly detection, we're able to pick up on this and automatically you know, alert the data team of this issue that they need to look into. So this is a, a common scenario within Big Eye. You get the alert. Now you need to figure out, okay, let's go and triage, let's, let's figure out what's going on and try and solve this problem. So one of the first things you can look at is the lineage. So if I go to the lineage tab of this particular issue, and let's make this a little bit bigger. You can see, okay, so this data, this metric that we're looking at is the price per unit column in our Postgres source. It then goes and is loaded from some informatica power center jobs, loads into a snowflake pod replica schema, and then eventually goes into a conformed schema within Snowflake, and then eventually is used within the sales dashboard within Tableau, our critical dashboard. So this is an issue that we as a data team need to solve. And this shows me the actual full end-to-end -end lineage of you know, where, not only where this column originates, but all the you know, transformations and the jobs that will impact the end quality of this column in the dashboard itself. So I can use this lineage to find out you know, what's my impact analysis, you know, what, how many and how important are the dashboards that are impacted by this issue but also what's the root cause. And it looks like since this is the Postgres table, this is the most upstream source, we know that this is the actual root cause issue and, and where we need to uh, spend our time diagnosing the problem. So that's our price per unit. And this is why the Informatica Power Center release is so important because without this knowledge, we would just be connecting you know, schema to schema. We would know Postgres goes into simple. But with this ETL connector, we can now see at a column level how these columns are getting mapped over to our Snowflake source from Postgres. So the next thing I would do as a data engineer trying to you know, triage and solve this problem would be, well, let's look at the debug tab. The debug tab gives me you know, the metric query that was run to produce that result, but it also gives me a debug query that's going to allow me to look at the actual rows that we believe are anomalous and causing this issue. So I found my root cause, I would go to the root cause table and, and execute this debug query, and it's gonna give me at a row level, you know, the actual problem. So I can quickly see like, okay, the price per unit on these records are a lot lower than I would expect. We are not gonna sell this cassette for 13 cents or the CD for 15 cents. That seems like somebody either fat fingered a number or there, there seems like there's an error in what's being put into that price per unit column. So by looking at this debug query and the actual row level information, it allows us to quickly get to you know, what the problem is and who we need to go talk to. And again, I only found this because I, I was able to trace the whole lineage, 
find the root cause, the most upstream issue, and then go to that upstream issue and run the debug query to find you know, the exact rows that are causing the problem. And that's where Big Eye really shines in, in improving or increasing the speed to resolving these data quality issues. So that's going to be, that's, that's a typical example of you know, an issue that was raised by Big Eye using our anomaly detection and how a data engineer can leverage lineage to find the root cause and some of our debug functionality to find the row level information to solve that problem. But now let's quickly look at how we were able to get to this point um, and how we're able to create these metrics to catch these types of anomalies. Now with, with a lot of observability tools out there, you have to start kind of with brute force. You have to go at a table by table level, you know, you have to think about what's my most critical tables and deploy monitoring on those tables. But, but Big Eye kind of split the script a little bit and changed how we deployed monitoring so that it can be done kind of on a more intuitive level. So if I go to our lineage page and I'm going to search up, which I already have apparently, my critical dashboard. This is our critical dashboard that the business team consumes. We know it's very important to them. I want to make sure that there's monitoring on this particular dashboard. We're going to start with the end data assets themselves rather than trying to make sure we cover all the bases by going table by table and deploying all these metrics. We're going to start, okay, I have this critical dashboard. Let's just deploy monitoring on everything that matters upstream of that critical dashboard. So I can see again with our column level lineage, I can see, okay, here's my critical dashboard in Tableau. It has these two different pages. It's coming from these conformed views within Snowflake, which event, which originally comes from Postgres, uses that Informatica Power Sensor job. So this is the, kind of the whole pipeline of information for how these Tableau dashboards are being generated. And what you'll notice is we're only showing the columns that matter in this view. We're not showing any columns that don't matter because only the price per unit and the quantity columns are being used within this sales dashboard Tableau report. And so we're only going to deploy monitoring on the columns that matter. We're not going to be deploying monitoring on just every single column that's touching it, that's, that's available. We're only going to be deploying monitoring on the columns that matter. And this is really important because it reduces cost because we're, it's less consumption on your sources. And it also reduces alert fatigue because there's less metrics you can look at there's only going to be metrics on the column that you care the most about because those columns are being used within your Tableau dashboard. Um, so in order to deploy monitoring on this critical dashboard, if I open up the right-hand pane, you can see I have this big button that just says deploy metrics to dashboard. Um, and if I click that button, it's going to give me a few options. Uh, we have this quick start for auto metrics. This is Big Eye's recommended monitoring. So what we do is we do some semantic profiling on the columns that are upstream of this dashboard. And, you know, based on the data type, the naming conventions and things like that, we're able to recommend monitoring that you should deploy on those particular columns. And in this case, I, I've already deployed it, so I'm not able to, uh, I'm not able to show you, but we also have 70 plus out of the box metrics that you can use to deploy actual custom monitoring on these tables or these specific columns as well. Um, let me go to a different environment and show you what these. So I'm going to find my dashboard and I'm going to hit the big magic blue button to deploy metrics to the dashboard. Then I'm going to go to my auto metrics, hit next. And just to kind of, just to give you an idea of what types of metrics we're going to automatically recommend that you deploy. We're given no nulls on all ID columns, freshness and volume to make sure things are updated on time, and then some some numeric on all of your like integer columns, we're going to run min max averages just for looking at distributions to make sure we can catch uh, any big swings in those distributions. So these are going to be the quick start metrics that we're going to recommend. So it's super easy to get started. I found my dashboard, click the big boot button, and then I'm just going to deploy the recommended monitoring from Big Eye. And then it's going to give me the options for do I want to assign a metrics owner? So in most cases, the owner of the metrics is going to be the person who created that but you can also assign that to a specific user if you wanted to. And then you can assign these to a particular collection. This is important because in collections is how we route notifications. So if I assign all of these metrics to a particular collection, let's call it the critical dashboard collection, um, I can then uh, route all of notifications from my critical dashboard collection to a particular spot 
so data team members or even business members can see when alerts are being fired and we can know instantly when data quality issues. So that's it. I've configured all my metrics. I've chosen the, the quick start guide for Big Eye and it's, I'm gonna hit deploy. What that does is, I'm not gonna actually hit the button right now, but what that does is it looks at the, only the columns that matter. It's gonna look at all of these columns and deploy the recommended monitoring against those parts. So just to recap kind of what we did in the demo, uh, we first looked at from a business user's perspective, the Tableau extension. They are, they go to Tableau, they want to make a decision, and before they can make a decision on the data, they can first browse using the browser extension to see whether any open data quality problems exist. So that gives them a quick, a quick snapshot of, you know, what the data team is doing, if there's any open problems, and if they can trust the data in this dashboard. So that's what the business uh, team sees. Then from a data team perspective, they are getting alerted when issues arise using our anomaly detection platform and our debug. And then they're trying to solve those problems using our lineage to find the root cause and our debug features to find the actual rows that are causing those problems. And then to deploy this monitoring, you can easily just search for the dashboards that matter most to your business. And then using our dependency driven, driven monitoring concept, you can deploy metrics to that particular dashboard, and it's only going to deploy the, to the most critical, the only column that feeds that dashboard, so that you are only monitoring the things that matter most. And the last thing I kind of want to talk about is what's what's the purpose of data observability? Why do we create things like this? What's the uh, intended business outcome? So the first intended outcome is to reduce risk. So really, what we're trying to achieve with data observability is we want to keep bad data from reaching your end users and really your analytics so that they're not making decisions off of bad data or they're, or they're, they're not losing trust in the data in, in what the data team is producing. And one of a quote from a customer is, from Q1 to Q3, we took time to re response and resolution down by 24% and cut the number of incidents by 50%. That really shows how we're helping businesses reduce the number of risks and increase the time to resolution. The next main thing that we're trying to, next outcome that we're trying to achieve is to optimize data teams. It can be really uh, manual and time in intensive to try and build a platform like this that, or data quality solution on your own. So with this data observability platform, what we're really trying to do is reduce the time and money spent, you know, not only chasing data fires, uh, but also, you know, empowering your, your data team to work on projects that matter the most and new value add projects rather than trying to fix them. And the last thing we want to do is drive data adoption. So when end users, the business users can't trust the data that the data team is producing, then they're not going to look at the dashboards. They're not going to be a, a really a data driven company. They're not going to make decisions based off of that data. So with increased trust in analytics, using a data observability platform, then it, it helps drive more data adoption so that businesses can become more um, data-driven. And one of the quotes from our customers is, Big Eye gives us confidence that data going out to our C-suite and external third parties is not only complete, but also correct. And kind of to highlight, you know, one case study we've done with enterprise company like Zoom, they were having some problems with their data quality checks. It was taking a really long time to do root cause analysis. And so, after implementing data observability platform with Big Eye, they ended up, you know, reducing their outages. They, they caught two to three outages per month and, and remediated them within the same month. And they saw a 75% reduction in time spent managing just overall data rules. So rather than manually creating all these SQL data quality checks, they were able to, you know, implement the data observability platform and reduce a lot of time spent manually creating these rules. So this is a really a, a good use case to talk about. And with that, if you're an enterprise company or someone with a, you're more of a hybrid stack and want to learn more about Big Eye, please scan the code here and, and book your demo. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to me and hopefully we can talk soon.